Right, okay, the time has come for another geeky video. <laughs> this time we're going to do um, a video on just uh, Cubase logical editor commands, uh, the Emily or the logical editor. I'm going to call it the Emily from this point because there is the PLE, which is the project logical editor, and that's a, another beast in itself. But this is purely about creating what I think are the most essential um, MLE commands for productivity and workflow. So, and, it, you know, it's highly geeky. So if, if you're the type of person that prefers books with just pictures and no words, then <laughs> maybe this isn't the, the video for you, man or woman. Right. I think the first thing. Oh, there's another reason as well. Someone asked me, um, Ed, e-drug man music say no more right um he uh asked me about some of the um emily commands that i've got in in my list and a composer called scott glasgow if i remember rightly he um he basically gave me some of what he said are hans zimmer's ones uh and i've i've, I've created most of them anyway but there are a couple in there express and um uh, and expand and compress uh for uh mod and velocity and volume and stuff so we, we'll do that at the end um uh but first things first i think the most essential key commands to create emily commands to create is how to raise and lower um velocity so if we go into if we go on here let's let's basically make the track smaller <laughs> We just need some data just to mess around with. Um, so, <laughs> excuse my playing, I'm not going to do anything to a click either. That'd do. <laughs> I'll sit here all day. I love the sound of chamber strings. Okay, so I, I want to raise everything by 10. Now, on the iPad, I've got a button that does that and it lowers it by 10. But I'm not going to use, I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to go into how to use Metagrid or anything like that. I've got, I've, I've done a video on that already. Basically, it's just about creating MLE commands. Um, so first things first, load up the MLE. And I've got, um, I've, I've got certain things on shortcuts. If I press, um, if I press F13, the PLE appears, but the PLE never appears inside a MIDI event. So if I press F13, there's the PLE. If I press Shift and F14, the Emily, the logical editor appears. You can only have one at a time open. Um, so let's go back in there and select that. Um, if you didn't know, G and H, zoom in and out. Let's open up the Emily and let's raise the velocity by 10. Okay, so if you look at the velocity here, it raises it by 10, and just to prove it is 10, that says 78 there under velocity, and then apply. And okay, so brackets type is equal to note, close brackets, and then value two is add, and the parameter is 10. So if we want to subtract by 10, change add to subtract, make it 10 and then apply. And it's as simple as that. You change that if you want that to be 25. Apply, add, change that back to 25 and then add again. And obviously once you create um, an MLE command, click here and then save it. So I'm not gonna save it. Well, I can Let's go back to 10. Add to 10, call it whatever you want. I've called it plus 10 velocity, click OK. And to find that, another one I've got a shortcut for is the key command section of Cubase. And if you look in process logical preset, this is where they're stored. Um, plus 10 velocity, that's what we just created. So simple. Now, if I want to change, um, Let's go out of here and let's go on to something with legatos so we can use more than.
I've just pressed a button called mute and unmute objects. Sensual button, that is. It's a Cubase thing. Definitely get that uh, on the go. Okay, so I'm just going to play something, and I'm going to... It's going to be bad, because I'm going to play in real time. I'm going to play mod wheel expression vibrato and main volume. But just so we've got something to play with here. Okay. Um, what I want to do is, oh God, there's so many. Um, I think the next most essential thing is to boost mod up or down by a, a value of your choice. So let's do um, mod by 10. I'm going to just quickly um, take the values down so we've got some headroom to play with. Um, and then main volume. I don't know why I got stuck then. Okay, right. I'm going to show you how to do all that. Mod. How to boost the modulation by 10. It's, it's slightly different, but, it, you know, the, once you get this concept, it's really easy. Um, if I hit apply, this should make this go up 10. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. So bracket type is equal to controller and MIDI controller number is equal to one. So you're telling it to look for a controller. You want it to target a controller and it has to be equal to exactly one. Close the bracket and then value two is add and then parameter is 10. So you can change that to two if you want. Then watch this go up by two. And the this, this, this same goes for subtracting. So change add to subtract, change that to 10, and then it goes down. And we want to do expressions to change this, change the controller number from 1 to 11, because 11, CC 11. If you didn't know, CC stands for continuous controller. Um, and we can get into that another time, perhaps. Um, CC 11. When we press that, it should raise CC11 by a parameter of 10. Uh, sorry, change that to add, change that to 10, and then apply. And same goes for subtraction. Okay, and then do the same for um, vibrato 21 or CC2, which is breath or main volume, which is CC7. So let's say that we want to, let's say we want to do two things at once. Let's say we want to actually raise mod and expression. Now I've got a button here that does that. And this is actually something that is important to say. If you're using the MLE and you're trying to press key commands that you've assigned to iPads and whatever else you, you're actually doing, if you have the MLE open, God, this took so long to work this out. If you have that MLE open, the buttons don't work. So I'm going to press mod and expression up by 10. Oh, look, nothing happened. <laughs> so delete it or get rid of it. Now when I press it, both go up. That's just something to remember because it is a real pain when it, you know, when you haven't been asleep for two days and wondering why your world is ending musically. Um, Let's go in here. Uh, what's it called? CC1. No, it's copy. I think it's increase. See, yeah, okay, look. And, and you can make as many as you want. I, I don't tend to need too many of these, but this is increase CC1 and CC11. So we press apply and it does both. So just copy this. Bracket type is equal to controller and MIDI controller number is equal to one or equal to 11. And it has to be or not and, because if it was and, you would think it's and, right? You'd think, oh, but I want one and 11. It doesn't work like that. Because the MIDI data, the CC data has to be identical on both tracks for it to actually, for the um, MLE to actually pick up the tracks. If you put it to or, it will recognize both of the tracks. It will be either or, 
so it will select both and then obviously change that to whatever you want as before 20 or subtract or multiply is completely up to you but that is how you do two things at once now okay i think we should probably do deleting delete cc's because this stuff is the time saver let's say that we've got an amazing take and we love that <laughs> obviously but the cc data we messed up the vibrato and you know we can do four things at once it's a great thing to be able to just suddenly delete like suddenly oh i i, I didn't like the expression so i press that and delete that or i didn't like vibrato so i press that and delete that or i didn't like the um volume wherever I, yeah okay it's there <laughs> however i did like the mod and I would like to copy that and put it onto expression. In fact, <laughs> jumping ahead of the gun, maybe I should show you how to delete first. Um, it's just because I've done this video so many times now um, and I haven't planned any of it, so I'm just making it all up as I go. If I click here, right, CC1. I want to delete CC1. I also want all the other data back so we've got something to play with. If I press apply, delete CC1. Okay, so copy that. Bracket type is equal to controller and MIDI control number equal CC1 modulate, uh, modulation. And then close the bracket. Make sure function is on delete and you don't need an action target. And once you learn that, then the same goes for deleting... Um, CC11, so type in 11 and it comes up with expression. Any CC data that you want to delete, 21, let's try that. And then CC7 for volume, sustain is 64, put that in if you are doing piano and stuff, you know, it's useful. But that's how you delete. Um, now, something that is really valuable in my opinion is deleting all the cc's so i have a button that does that and let's say again say you've copied a part and you just think oh, i'm just going to program this again the, the the rhythm the performance is good but all the rest is rubbish so press delete all cc's and it all vanishes but it keeps the notes so let's do that sorry if this video is really quick like you can pause all of this stuff um Delete. Oh, I bet you passed this. Delete all CCs. Okay, so hit apply just to prove it works. Um, bracket type is equal to controller and MIDI control number is inside the range of CC0 and CC127. So you need to then make it sure that you need to make sure the action target is value one add and then zero but make sure the function is delete otherwise this won't work and what what that's saying is you just are telling it to find all controllers between zero and 127 and and that's the entire extremities of midi values zero to 127 so once you've done that just click apply now we come into a little bit of a problem here let's say that you're doing your weird prog <laughs> band and and you're bending the shit out of that wheel um pitch bend and after touch aren't cc so there is a bit of an issue here let's draw pitch bend and after touch let's press um delete all cc's they obviously don't delete so what we can do is we can create another filter target to just target pitch bend as well and um, uh, an aftertouch, I mean, just, it's as easy as just adding them. But what, um, I sometimes don't want to delete any of that. Sometimes the pitch bend is part of the sounds and you know I like having them separately. So what I've got are separate buttons. If I, on the iPad, if um, I press secondary scene, I have these buttons here, delete aftertouch. If you go back to the screen, you'll see it now delete. And then I've also got on the iPad again, uh, delete pitch bend. So you can, I'll just quickly show you how to do that because it, I mean, it's really easy. 
And it's really simple when you know how. Pitch bends, let's find that. Okay, so if I press apply, deletes it. And that is brackets, type is equal to pitch bend, close brackets. And no action target, we just make sure the function is delete. And if you want to delete after touch, press that and then hit delete. So it is, you know, easy. Um, just thinking of other things. Okay, now we've done the deleting. Um, I think it would be. I think it's important to go from copying mod data to expression, or mod to vibrato, or expression to mod. And there are so many variables and different ways of doing this. So I've created a few um, ones that I use quite frequently. So on the iPad, above the words copy and paste by the bottom left, you see mod to expression, mod to volume, mod to vib, and expression to mod. And I'll show you how to do this. I'm going to now press delete module. I'm going to press delete expression, delete volume, delete vibrato. And now we're left with just mod. I want to copy um, mod to expression. So let's press that button now. Amazing. Let's undo that. Actually, no, let's not undo that. I'm going to delete mod. I now, oh, I like the expression. I just want to copy expression to mod. Sorted. Oh, how about to mod to vibrato or mod to volume? How about I don't like any of them, so we um, delete them all. <laughs> all this makes it such a joy to go. Mike, Mike Verter asked me recently, he said, do I actually use all this shit? And the answer is yes, Mike. <laughs> all this shit <laughs> exists so I can just actually edit stuff very quickly rather than having to oh god can we delete that there oh oh fuck now i've got to draw that shit in and don't need to do any of that with all this it just takes a bit of time to set it up and with sound design and synth stuff this comes into its own it's not just performing your your, your orchestral stuff like you like you do um anyway right let's delete all the cc's um apart from that let's go back into the emily CC1 to 11. Let's do CC1 to 11. This is how you do this. If I press apply to show it works. Okay, so brackets type is equal to controller and MIDI controller number is equal to CC1. Then close the brackets. And then action target is value one, set to fixed value, CC11 expression. And the function is going to be insert. You want to insert CC1 onto 11. And this is on the same track. In a minute, we'll we go copy this and put it onto a different track, which is useful as well. So that's how you do that. If you want to change that, so you want mod to um, uh, volume, press seven, and then that goes to volume. If you want that to vibrato, let's apply. Okay, so that, that's simple as it is. Next thing, let's do, I'm gonna get rid of after touch and pitch bend now, we don't need those. Remove this lane. Remove this lane. Um, Okay, so let's copy, let's just say that we actually did record a part. Is snap not on? No, it is on. Let's say that we, you know, had a count in and we started at this bar and you know, mob data was there and we started playing. Let's pretend that that is, you know, a masterpiece. 
what I want to do is copy this and put it onto another track. So I've got a button here that does that. And if I press it, let's copy modulation. And if we come out of here, and let's say I want to copy that to violins too. Then all I do, it goes into the clipboard, but I have got copy and paste on the iPad, but it's nothing special. It's literally uh, copy and paste, like uh, Command C, Command V or Control if you're on PC. Um, so let's just press paste, job done. It copies it without the notes, which is quite useful. You can obviously do this so you copy the notes as well, but yeah, you know, these are all just shortcuts. The the quicker you get with this stuff, the quick uh, you can just comp tracks together and stuff when you know you're up against it. It's important. So I've just shown how that works. Instant layering of stuff, even though you should play it all separately. I mean, you you should. It depends on time. But anyway, this this is a macro. You have to create firstly in the Emily. You have to create. The copy so we're going to cc1 copy which is simple enough what this will do is if, when you hit apply it copies but what it doesn't do is it doesn't actually work with the locators and it won't paste or insert into another track according to where the locators are and the locators are everything otherwise everything will be out of time so you could you can do this you can copy like i've just copied right and let's say that we're on here and then paste, but it won't be in the same place. Not necessarily, well, it will be because I haven't moved the cursor, but let's say I've moved the cursor, right? The cursor's here now. Now, it starts from there, but if you do this with a macro, it will always go where the locators are. So it's sensible to do this. Okay, so CC1 copy, copy this. Uh, brackets type is equal to controller and MIDI controller number is equal to CC1 modulation. No action target and then function is select. Check it works, it should do that. Now open up the uh, key commands in Cubase. And I have called this JMB copy CC1 just because people call me Jono and I, well, I don't hate Bono, I don't know him. But I'm not him. Process logical preset CC1 copy. We just made that. So in here, in this in this command section, go to process logical presets, and then find R1 just to show you where it is. CC1 copy. So basically, create a new macro. Call it what you want. And then the first command is what we just created. So copy that in, select it, add command, and then it, it turns up. Then the next thing to do is transport locators to selection. Let's go select that, add that command, and then it goes in. Then go to edit and then press copy. Okay. Right, and then add that. And then basically, we've now created a macro. Um, obviously, I'm pretending I'm doing it. I've already created it. But to access the macros, macros in Cubase, I don't, I don't really want to get too much into assigning stuff. But here, under macros, we can see this one here. Um, where is it? J and B copy CC. So select that. I'm going to use the closed square brackets because um, Cubase doesn't assign it to anything. So I always use them as my test buttons. So press in there, assign. And now when I press that, it's put the locators exactly where I've actually selected the CC, copied the CC. So now when I go to another track, violins, we just paste it and it's, ah, yeah, well, hold on. Make sure that the make sure the cursors where um, you start where you copy from, and then press that, and it, it will be exactly in the right place. Sorted. And the same goes for um, copying expression and uh, 
No. I've got copy volume, copy vibrio, copy portamento, slur volume, um, copy sustain, handy for pianos, that is, uh, copy mod and copy expression. And it's all the same. That's how you do it to different tracks. So another couple of things, another couple of really useful things, um, fixed velocities and select velocities. So let's just say that I want to select, let's, let's create a couple at a maximum. Say I, I'm looking at that masterpiece of a performance and thinking, what are those two ridiculous red notes sticking out for? I need to get rid of those quickly. And it's amongst low, so much MIDI data. So it's not as easy. You can easily do stuff when it's this sparse. You go in and just click it and delete it and stuff. But when you've got so much shit all over everything, pardon my English, it can become a bit of a drag. Um, so first things first, I want to be able to select those. Let's select. Okay, right. That there is velocity 31. I've got buttons on here on the iPad. Select velocity 020, 2130, 3140, 4150, 5166, 6170, 7180, 80, 90, 100. Completely ripped off of Hans Zimmer's template guide. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Hans Zimmer. <laughs> but you can change these values to anything you want. Um, so let's let's select 22. Um, open a MIDI command. Select velocity 21 to 30. Okay, when I press that, this should select. Yep, and that one there is 25. Okay, so copy that. Um, bracket type is equal to note and velocity inside range inside the range of 21 and 30 close brackets and that's important that i'm saying it like that because let's let's change that to try and select that that's 127 and the reason i'm doing this is just because this stumped me and i still don't know why i have no idea why um maybe someone can explain it to me but i want to be able to select 127 so you would think okay well, inside the range of 121 and 127. You would think that this is going to select between there. So let's hit apply and it does nothing. <laughs> it's just it's one of these things that is just really um, head scratching. So what you have to do in order to select anything in that range is change that to outside range change that to zero and change that to 121 or whatever numbers and, and figures you want to use. And just giving these as an example. Now it's going to actually search for any data above or outside of that range. So above 121. So now when I click apply, it selects it. <laughs> I don't know, man, it's magic, but that's what you got to do for select volume uh, velocities. Now, fixed velocities. Let's say that I want to change all of these. To, uh, I just want them even, and I'm going to mess around. Um, let's say I want to fix them all to 61. Well, say that a, a good reason why you have these kind of buttons is because, say you take um, performance legatos um, with uh, Spitfires chamber strings. It's not all just on how you, you can play, but you can if your keyboard can't hit it hasn't got a good enough velocity response like mine. Mine's a horrible piece of crap. And you need something to go at about 80 or 85, and you can't quite reach that without hammering it down. Then you can just press a button and it can change it all the velocity. So it doesn't change the performance. And this is where they really comes into its own. Um, so let's say I want to change everything to 91. I'll press on the iPad, 91. They all changed. I'll do it again so you can see it. 20, 21, oh, typical, 21, 31, 41, 51, 61, okay, fixed, and there is no magical weird uh, thing on this. It's, they're all the same. 
So let's change all those to 100, apply, job done. Bracket type is equal to note, bracket value to set to fixed value 111, and then transform and change whatever value you want. Say we want to change it to 25. Amazing. Such good shortcuts. And what else? I'm trying to remember what it is I've actually already talked about. I know. Let's do it. Let's do a few others that are quite cool. Um let's get out of here. Okay, so let's say I want to speed that up. Let's say I want to double tongue, double tempo that. You don't have to say if you select whatever you select, it will it will affect. Or if you don't select anything, everything will be affected. So if I press on the iPad, double tempo. It's just double the tempo. If I press it again, it doubles it again and again and again. It's pretty wonderful. Um, same for halving it. We halve it again. So to put that in a context, you know, I don't have jazz hands. I can't play 300 BPM performances. And to be honest with you, I don't think many can. So, you know, when you tempo map stuff, uh, to the grid and, and you play in half time you can play in half time with this and just hit one button and it just stretches it because let's say that we let's say that we didn't have those shortcuts the way to do that that's over four bars the way to do that press z and it makes the track larger cubase tip of the day um the way to do that is to select um the tool sizing applies time stretch. If you press the QWERTY one, two, uh, the twice, button one twice, it puts it straight into time stretch. Now we've half timed it. Oh, but I'm not happy yet. Let's try it again. Well, this is a, this is a fact. This mic <laughs> is exactly why these, these options exist. Um, so let's do that. Let's do, um, let's do half tempo and double tempo. My pants are gonna die. Where where is it? Oh, it's not capitalized, is it? Double tempo. Okay, so let's just prove this works. Glorious. So make a note of this. Brackets type is equal to note or type is unequal to note. And then action targets are length divided by two position divided by two, and then click apply. Um, okay, so now we want half tempo. Of course, yeah, bloody thing. Now let's hit apply. It halves it. Wonderful shortcuts these are. Um, so change that to multiply by two and multiply by two. Uh, length and position. Glorious. Um, okay, I've got a couple of other essential ones that I use now. Let me see. Let's go back to, let's me, here's an essential button and it is part of Cubase. So just use it, assign it, mute and unmute objects. It instantly mutes stuff. Okay. Mute and unmute. And this is really handy for in here. When you're selecting stuff, mute and unmute. And obviously if you right click, you've got that as well, but it, it's it's quite a thing. Invert selection. That's another great, great button to save time. 
um which oh i don't know if i've actually shown this but um oh god what is it um delete midi notes delete muted midi notes i'll just quickly show you this i think this is a cue base i think this is a cue base feature but you know when you comp tracks together and you have muted notes from different drum takes or whatever you're doing and stuff and and you've got hundreds of notes and you can't and you're trying to get in there with the mouse and you just it's just such a ball leg just have this instead assigned to a button and press apply and all the muted notes just vanish i mean what's what's not to love about this glorious um brackets property property is set event is muted and close the brackets and then delete there's no action target slightly digressed there I, I can't remember if i did that at the start i've done it about 10 times six times um a couple of other useful ones what i was going to do is go back to a legato let's play something okay so I liked the last bit. I didn't like any of it, but I liked the last bit. I loved the last bit. And the first bit, I just, I hated the, the rhythm of it was okay, but all the CC data was rubbish. I mean, I'm really pretending here, <laughs> digging deep. But let's just say that I didn't, I don't, I want to change that. I want to delete that, but I really like that. I want to keep that. And this is just a method of, you know, when you comp stuff and, and MIDI data just conflicts with each other and stuff. Um, I have like two legato tracks of the same thing on two separate instruments, so I can do takes on each one without messing up the data. So a, a workaround. But I have a button here. If you look on the iPad, I have um, select lane uh, in the middle, lane data before, and then select lane data beyond. So if I press that, it selects it before and selects lane data after. And let's say. Let's say that I I don't like the stuff at the start. I've got a button delete lane data from before, which is so handy, or delete lane data after. Select, and it deletes it. So I'll show you how to do that, and uh, we'll wrap the video up in a minute because it's a never-ending world. Um, Okay, hold on, that's delete. Let's do um let's do select. Select lane controller control lane data. Okay, so this is before cursor. Brackets type is equal to controller and MIDI control number inside range CC zero um to CC one two seven so inside that range and position before the cursor ppq which if i haven't said already it's pulses per quarter beat i think correct me if i'm wrong i i, I have no idea um value one add and then zero and then function is to select and to do beyond change before cursor to beyond oh i've already deleted it haven't i <laughs> Sorry, and then it selects beyond. Now, delete. This deletes the data before and then change this to beyond. So copy that. This is delete control lane data before the cursor. Brackets type is equal to controller and MIDI control number inside range CC0 to CC127 and position before cursor PPQ value one add zero and don't forget delete because it's the it's like going to a party and not having a Rizzler to actually, you know, smoke them up and stuff, man. Like, you know, that little bit of paper can crumble your whole world. Apparently. Last one, how to nudge MIDI data back 
by a set amount. Like, so you can say you're working on a film and you're and you're working on bars and beats, but you actually want to just nudge something back one frame or a few milliseconds. This is quite handy. Um, an example, if you've got cinematic studio strings or, um, yes, yeah, cinematic studio strings, actually, there's five latencies in there and the short notes, uh, the short articulation is of 50 milliseconds. So I have a button. If I press this on the iPad, selected MIDI notes minus 50 ms, it shifts back by 50 milliseconds. No matter what, the, I know that that's 50 milliseconds. I don't have to check a ruler or a grid or anything. It's quite useful. Um, and there's 50, 100, 150. You can assign anything you want. Um, I've called them offset selected MIDI notes by 50. So if I press that, it'll move them back, move these back by 50. So uh, brackets type is equal to note and property property is set and event is selected brackets position subtract and then here's where you choose seconds or you can choose samples frames this is how you do one frame at a time uh, or pbq but in this instance i wanted uh, milliseconds because they gave the exact measurement of latency and then make sure you've got transform and that will don't have them selected and that will work or it should have oh i changed it Have them selected. <laughs> okay, of course, event needs to be selected. That's those, and um, um, God, there's just there's too many. I I didn't really want to. We just keep it to Emily commands because I was I'll venture into, um, oh, there's select beats as well. There, there's so much. I basically got buttons that actually select on the beat. So you've got beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four, and all that kind of stuff. But maybe I'll make a separate video on that because I'm trying to work out something new. Selects, trying to create a grid. And uh, it's too long-winded, really, for today. These are supposed to be essential ones, and I've already started going into weird and wonderful ones. Um, and last but not least, in the MIDI... Um, uh, logical editor. I've got these Hans Zimmer ones, like I said before. Um, I've already shown you how to do all, nearly all of these. Volume, how to raise it by three. Um, but it was the expand and compress that um, Ed uh, was asking about. So let's change velocity. Let's do the velocity. Expand. If you check these notes out, I'm like, this is going to sound awful. Let's just record low notes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Literally, Cubase has just crashed. <laughs> I didn't like my music, man. Ugh, hold on. I have to load Cubase again. How typical, how ridiculously typical. Here is one of the benefits of having um, your template in uh, vPro because all the samples are already loaded outside of Cubase. So you don't have to go through that. Um, I have no idea. Basically, I've been going through some problems and I have a feeling my motherboard and my Mac Pro is faulty. So I have a feeling that's why I keep getting random crashes. Who knows? Highly boring. If I was any good at video editing, I'd just fast forward this, but I'm not, so <laughs> you gonna have to live with it. Fast forward it. I would literally just go through this. It's so funny, it's just crashed on just that, right? Because you're probably thinking, this is the only thing I wanted to look at. Okay. So let's... Let's, let's play some silent junk. <laughs> like, 
I don't want to do that again. Absolute classic. Right, okay, so let's just make this so we've got peaks and troughs. And I want to put that on the spiccatos, which is where the nudge up buttons really come into its own. They're just Cubase. That's why we like V Pro. We'd be we'd be sitting here for over 10, 15 minutes loading that if it was just in Cubase. Um right. Sorry about that. Uh if we open the MLE again. Mm, right. Uh, HD. Velocity expand. Okay, so this kind of acts like a compressor, like an audio compressor. Um, I tend to do this kind of stuff. I get the performance, and I tend to do this stuff with audio plugins, but I can see why this is quite valuable. Um, and I say that because I didn't create this. Like, I, I, you know, I, this guy Scott gave it to me, and it is quite useful. I'll just press apply so you can see what happens. And watch what happens to all these. It's not like fixing everything so it's all level. It's not like grabbing it and bringing them all down so they all stay the same. It takes a percentage and it multiplies by a certain, well, whatever you stipulate, in this case, 1.2. So add, it's, it's quite, let's bring this down. Let's just bring the velocity down, right? Oh God. Listen to myself. Bring the velocity down. Okay. Let's bring the velocity down even more so we've got more headroom to play with. If I if I bring this up, this HC um, velocity expand. You see what it's doing? It's essentially acting like a, a compressor or an expander, really. I mean, let's put the compression on. This is why some people say when you're bringing down the velocities, they say, oh, we're going to compress it. They're not compressing anything. They're just bringing down the, the, the velocities all with an equal amount. That's not compression. This, however, is. It works similar to the ratio. Basically, it's the ratio knob. It's taking a percentage, 1.2. It's dividing by. I, I don't know if this is exactly what you had in mind, Ed, um, but it's... Um, it's what I have, but it's quite a cool thing. I, I don't know if you, I'll ask someone I know whether they can achieve what you're asking because it's I'm not sure uh, about keeping it all center and stuff. But anyway, I digress. Here's how you do that. The compression brackets type is equal notes bracket and then value to divide by 1.2 and then transform. Same with um, uh, expand, but change that to multiplied by. It's quite handy. And then last but not least, the last one that I love um, of the Hans Zimmer ones. You know, you have quantized MIDI event uh, ends and fixed lengths. Like if we have fixed, we've got it eight, we've got the quantized presets on eighth notes. So if I press fixed lengths, it should actually have, it's already at eights anyway. Okay, so let's change that to 32. That changes it to 32, it's quite handy. That's already quantized because I drew them in. So now I, I just did them out to the, off the grid. Quantized MIDI event ends and it's done it to 32. So change that to um, eight. That's cool. We all have that. We all use that. That's that's great. This is what I love in the Hans Zimmer 
um, uh, uh, MLE commands. Length, note length. So let's press plus, and obviously you can change um, parameter one as much as you want, but watch what happens when I press apply. You can extend it by whatever you want, um, PPQ in this case, or we could do by frames, which is handy because you could stretch your music by frame. Like, uh, I like these a lot. And then obviously, well, hold on before we do that. Uh, bracket type is equal to note bracket and then length add. I've just changed that. Hold on. In this case is 88, but we could change it. Change it to whatever you want. Okay, so let's shorten it. And that's half of it, but subtracting. That's is that's cool. I, I like that. You know, it's, it's kind of like, especially if you want to mess around with different legatos and stuff like that. But they are the two Hans Zimmer ones, and I apologize for the crash. I mean, it's classic, really. Um, if I've missed anything out, I, I can't, at the moment, they're all the essential, and some of them not so essential, but I, I just thought I'd go uh, go through them and stuff. Let me know if, um, if if you want any more videos on anything like this. I mean, I, it, it does make writing music a lot easier. So anyway, I'll see you later. Hopefully this is the last time I make this one.